Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and the iPhone 13, 13 mini, 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max have been officially announced and you can pre-order yours starting this Friday, September 17th at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. However, if you just finished watching Apple's keynote or you've been browsing their website looking at all the different iPhone 13 models, you might be confused on which iPhone 13 model you should order, if any, and also what new features are available on the iPhone 13 because I feel like Apple didn't really go over all the features that clearly during their presentation. And you might be asking for some buying advice because Apple kept a lot of iPhones in the lineup. And the iPhone 13 lineup is one of the most diverse ever with Apple keeping the iPhone 11 in the lineup at $499 and the iPhone 12 mini and iPhone 12 now starting at $599 as well as this new iPhone 13 with four different models. So first let's go over the iPhone 13 and the 13 Pro with all of their new features and some things you need to be made aware of. So first of all, the iPhone 13 and 13 mini are both getting a slightly refreshed design. Although they will have the same body as the 12 series, they are getting a smaller notch, which Apple says is now 20% smaller compared to the previous iPhone models. The iPhone 13 also comes in new colors across the lineup with starlight replacing white, midnight replacing black, a new lighter blue color, a light pink specifically designed for Jasmine, and of course, the product red option. The camera arrangement will also be different with Apple now having a diagonal camera placement, which they actually say is done to allow the iPhone 13 to fit in some of the more advanced camera features. So it's not just for looks. So now there is a new F 1.6 wide camera that allows for 47% more light an improved ultra wide angle camera, which will let in more light as well. And more room for the sensor shift stabilization that stabilizes the sensor itself for better low light photos. That was an exclusive feature on the 12 Pro Max last year, but it will now be in every iPhone 13 model, even the small little mini. Apple is also adding a brand new cinematic video mode to the iPhone 13, which looked really impressive in the demo they showed off during the event. And it allows you to artificially blur the background of your video like you can with portrait mode photos and also allows for advanced filming techniques like rack focus, which shifts focus from one subject to another. And on top of that, cinematic mode will automatically do these focus pooling effects by anticipating when a subject enters the frame. So it looks pretty easy to actually use. However, for more advanced users, if you want to control the focus yourself and edit the depth effect afterwards, you can do that if it doesn't get it 100% perfect. Now, although this cinematic video mode looked really impressive, I was a little upset to see that if you read the fine print on Apple's website, cinematic video mode is limited to just 1080p resolution. So no 4K cinematic video mode, and I'm pretty bummed about that. Now, while I think the cameras were the main focus of the iPhone 13 upgrades, there's still a few upgrades to go over. The A15 chip being one of them, and the A15 chip in the iPhone 13 is boasting some speed improvements with a new six core CPU design with two performance cores and four energy efficient cores, a 16 core neural engine, and a four core GPU. Interestingly enough, as I'll get into in the iPhone 13 Pro section in just a second, the 13 Pro actually has a stronger A15 chip this year with a five core GPU instead of the four found on the regular 13. The 13 also gets a better display this year, which can now get to 800 nits of max screen brightness and still has up to 1200 nits for HDR video. This puts it up with the same quality as the 12 Pro display from last year. One of the best additions, in my opinion, to the iPhone 13 is the bigger battery in every model. With my beloved mini getting an additional 1.5 hours of battery life, which is much needed, and the regular 13 getting a whopping 2.5 hours of additional battery life. That means the mini is rated for 17 hours of continuous video playback, and the 13 is now rated for 19 hours. The 13 also comes with expanded 5G radios. The 13 mini and 13 are going to be the same price as the previous iPhone 12 models, which means $699 for the 13 mini and $799 for the regular 13 when you buy it through the carrier. Be aware that the phones unlocked are $30 more. However, this year Apple is actually making this a much better deal by increasing the base storage 
on the regular iPhone 13 models to 128 gigabytes. That's double the previous 64 gigabytes. This is awesome because in previous years, I would always recommend spending the extra $50 to get the 128 gigabytes of storage. And I thought that was the sweet spot for iPhone storage. And now, most of you watching this video can buy the base storage iPhone model without fear of running out of storage. And I'm very happy for that because I love saving you guys money. Okay, let's turn our attention to the Pro models because this is pretty interesting. So everything I said about the 13 is almost carrying over to the 13 Pro and Pro Max with a few exceptions in the chip, the display, and of course the cameras. So like I said in the 13 section, the 13 Pro is going to have a more powerful A15 chip and it's going to get an additional core in its GPU design and it will have a five core GPU instead of a four core GPU, which could give it an edge in graphics capabilities, especially in areas like gaming. One area where it will definitely carry that advantage is in the display because this is the best iPhone display yet. So not only is it brighter than the regular 13 display, maxing out now at 1000 nits of max brightness versus the 13's 800 nits, but it also gets an LTPO OLED display with Apple's ProMotion display technology, which can change the display's refresh rate so that when you're viewing the display, it can lower all the way down to 10 Hertz and then ramp up the display when you're interacting with it, like scrolling or when you're playing a game with a high frame rate, all the way up to 120 Hertz. If this works similarly to how the iPad's ProMotion display works, this means that the Pro display will appear much smoother when you're using it compared to the regular 13's display, and it should not lead to any negative impact on battery because when it's not using the 120 Hertz refresh rate, which can drain the battery, it can lower its refresh rate all the way down to 10 Hertz, thus saving you battery life. In fact, because of this, technically, although it's not a realistic use case, you can technically get an additional nine hours of battery life during offline video playback on the 13 Pro Max because it saves more energy by lowering the refresh rate compared to the regular 13. So it will be very interesting to test out the battery life between the 13 and the 13 Pro. Speaking of the battery, the iPhone 13 Pro is rated at 1.5 hours more than the 12 Pro, and the 13 Pro Max is rated at 2.5 hours more than the 12 Pro Max. So the 13 Pro Max sounds like it's going to be an absolute battery champ. And I think this year it's going to be a good year for iPhone longevity with these big beefy batteries, again, in every model. Finally, perhaps the biggest reason to go with the Pro iPhones this year, besides the 120 Hertz refresh rate, and that is a big reason, is the camera system, which has a number of improvements compared to the regular 13, a lot more than I thought. First of all, the 13 Pro and Pro Max has three camera lenses instead of the two found on the 13, and of course that LiDAR scanner, which was also found on the 12 Pro series last year. And every camera is an improvement compared to the regular 13. So you get an f1.5 aperture for the wide angle camera compared to the f1.6 found on the regular 13, a 3X telephoto lens at f2.8, which the 13 doesn't have, and is an improvement from the 2.5X found on the 12 Pro Max from last year. And you even get an improved ultra wide f1.8, which allows in more light on the iPhone 13 Pro compared to the f2.4 aperture on the iPhone 13. And this ultra wide camera can do macro photography for extreme close up shots, which the regular 13 completely lacks. On top of that, the Pro iPhones can also shoot in Apple's ProRes video codec, which is a less compressed video codec than usual, which should mean a file that is not only easier to edit in video editing programs like Final Cut Pro, but it should also have more data in that video file, and that should make it easier to color grade as well. Just be aware that if you order the 128 gigabyte version of the iPhone 13 Pro or Pro Max, ProRes video for some strange reason is capped at just 1080p, 30 frames per second. So you'll have to buy a 256 gigabyte storage or higher to get 4K ProRes video, which is kind of strange, but I guess I get it because ProRes video is going to take up a ton of storage. So I guess they wanted to make sure that, you know, Pro users on the 128 gigabyte model would not run out of storage 
fast and complain. Speaking of storage tiers, the iPhone 13 starts at $999 for 128 gigabytes, which again, I would avoid if you wanna use that ProRes video feature, but you can get the 256 gigabyte version for 1,099, a 512 gigabyte version for 1,299, and a new one terabyte storage option for $1,499. The Pro Max also starts at $1,099 and is $100 more in every storage increment than the regular 13 Pro. So if you max it out, the one terabyte version will retail for $1,599. All Pro models are available in graphite, silver, gold, and a new Sierra blue color, which is probably the color that I will be getting because that baby blue, that baby blue is nice. All right, now I just threw a ton of details at you and hopefully I didn't leave anything out that was too important. But your next question is probably, Greg, what iPhone model should I go with? Should I get something like the 13 mini or should I go for the more expensive pro models? Well, let's try and answer that. But actually I think we're gonna start at the top first because I think the people who should order the pro phones uh, fall into two categories. First of all, if you want a faster 120 hertz refresh rate, I mean, the only place you're going to get that on this year's iPhone models is on the Pro model. So if you want that feature, order the Pro model. Or option B, if you want the best camera possible, because like I mentioned in the Pro camera section, there are a ton of camera improvements and exclusive features this year on every lens for the iPhone 13 Pro, and it beats out the regular iPhone 13 if you want the best camera. I would also say if you want the best battery life possible or the biggest display possible, well, you gotta go for the 6.7 inch iPhone 13 Pro Max. If you want a solid phone, which sounds like it will have great battery life, but at a more manageable 6.1 inch size, well then go for the regular 13 Pro. Obviously money might be an issue. And now that the iPhone 13 starts at 128 gigabytes, just like the Pro models, you might be tempted to save $200 and go for the iPhone 13, which has a lot of the same improvements as the 13 Pro, like better battery life, cinematic video modes, a smaller notch, better 5G. And even though the cameras aren't as good as the Pro models, it has a lot of improvements as well. And if you don't care about the 120 Hertz refresh rate, a extra zoom lens or macro photography, or again, the ProRes video codec, which is really only going to be useful uh, for video editors, then you should go with the regular 13 model. It sounds like a pretty good phone for $800. If you want the smallest iPhone possible, I think the 13 mini is going to be a fantastic phone this year, especially because of the promised 1.5 hours of additional battery life. As you know, I love the iPhone 12 mini and I used it as my main phone for the majority of the iPhone 12 cycle. And my biggest complaint with that phone was the battery life. So if you're thinking you might like a smaller phone, definitely try out the 13 mini. It really sounds like it's going to be a much more solid phone this year. However, let's acknowledge the elephant in the room because if you look at the iPhone 13, you can kind of tell it wasn't the biggest upgrade this year. And Apple has kept the 12 mini and the regular 12 in the lineup. So the 12 mini now starts at 599 and the 12 starts at 699. So if you want to save money and still get a good phone, the 12 is certainly a good option. However, there is one problem with the 12, and that is that it starts at 64 gigabytes of storage. So if you are planning on getting the 128 gigabyte version, then you're only saving $50 from the iPhone 13. And at a $50 difference, I think you should skip the 12 and get all the improvements that the 13 model offers. The only way I can recommend the 12 is if you really don't use that much storage and you know you're gonna be 100% fine with a 64 gigabyte model, then at $100 less, it's a respectable deal when you consider the 13 series is pretty comparable to the 12. But for the battery life improvements, I would really be tempted by the 13. As for an older phone, the iPhone 11 looks to remain the most practical iPhone in the entire lineup because it is just $499 now. And at $499, it packs in a respectable combination of a 6.1 inch display, good battery life, good cameras. And if you're fine with an LCD display instead of OLED, it can be a great way to save a lot of money on an iPhone. And I think it is a way better deal than the current iPhone SE which is just $100 less at $399, and that has an older design and honestly a pretty bad battery. But yeah, that is basically everything you need to know before you buy an iPhone 13 or 
any iPhone model in the lineup for that instance. Remember, pre-orders start this Friday, September 14th at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I would recommend pre-ordering one as soon as possible to make sure you get it on release day, which is Friday, September 24th. As always, I hope the video helped you out with your purchasing decision, so let me know in the comments below if this video was helpful and what iPhone model you're planning on getting and what color and what storage tier and all that good stuff. And also make sure you're subscribed to the channel because we got a lot of Apple content to go over this month and I'm gonna be pumping out a lot of videos very soon. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video, which I'm going to work on as soon as I upload this one. So take care and hey, wish me luck.